Hey, Liam Ward here at LearnTheHarmonica.com. Today we're talking about playing harmonica in a rack, or sometimes called a neck brace or just a harmonica holder. So you heard me doing a little bit there, playing the washboard, got my little uh, gun cartridges on my fingers to play the washboard. You might use the rack if you're playing guitar, that's the most common thing to do, but I'm no guitarist, I mean I'm not much of a washboard player, but I do play the washboard with my jug band, so I thought I'd show you a little bit of that. Now, I don't play that much harmonica in a rack, that is not my main thing, but I just wanted to give you some basic tips. So from someone who's given it a little bit of a go and I'm trying it more and more, the things that I've noticed, just simple little ideas. So I'm just gonna run through those and I hope that they help you when you're trying this out for yourself. So my first tip is to get a good rack. Now, this is a K and M. A harmonica rack. Hona also make a really good one. I'm not affiliated with either of those companies, but I will put a link to both of these if you want to find out more about those. The problem with the cheapest ones is that they are uh, kind of clumsy to put together. They're also really flimsy. So the good thing with this is you've got a kind of quick release. All I have to do is twist these and I can kind of loosen it or, or tighten it. Some of them, they've got really kind of basic versions of these and that means that you're kind of having to really loosen and tighten um, and it takes longer. Also, they just don't stay in place. So you kind of end up chasing the, chasing the rack around the room, you kind of, because it doesn't want to stay uh, in your mouth. So you do want to get a good one. I think this was about 20 pounds, 30 pounds maybe. You can get one for five pounds or five dollars or even cheaper, but it definitely won't be as good. So it is worth paying that little bit more. That takes me on to my next point, which is that I find that lip pursing is easier than tongue blocking when I'm playing in a rack. Now, this is coming from someone who tongue blocks a lot. I, I, I'm predominantly a tongue blocking player now, but this thing about chasing it around the room, even with a good rack, it's quite hard to get really far onto the instrument because some of it is gonna be in, in the rack there. So getting really far onto it is difficult. So I find if I'm tongue locking, I kind of end up in this awkward position. You can put it right up close to your mouth, but then it's hard to come out and sing if you're singing, that kind of thing. So I find if I'm lip pursing, it just gives me that little bit more distance between me and the instrument, so it's easier. And especially when you're kind of trying to play at the same time, you can't be spending all your time trying to get further and further onto the instrument. The next thing is to limit your expectations. Your tone is not gonna be quite as good as it will when you're holding the harmonica. So that's un unavoidable in the sense that there are things that you can't do with your hands because your hands are doing other things. Now, that doesn't mean you can't get a good tone because so much of your tone is internal, but it does mean that you've not got the chance to shape the sound, cup it, release. So you're not gonna be having these kind of You can play the same notes, but they're gonna not have that, you're not gonna be able to wire it, you're not gonna be able to control that tone by cupping and releasing. So because your hands aren't there, you're gonna be limited in terms of those extra textures that you would normally be able to get. So the best thing to do is just accept that from the start rather than kind of get frustrated with it when it comes up. The last thing, and maybe the most important, is to keep it simple. And the reason I say this is that when you're playing the instrument and you're also playing a guitar or you know, washboard, if you're like me, then it's kind of like rubbing your belly and tapping your head at the same time. You've got to kind of uh, multitask. You've got to keep your mind on two things. So it makes sense to keep it simple, but this is okay because there's kind of, you're allowed more leeway when you're playing in a rack. So if you think of Dylan and Neil Young, I know that Bob Dylan is a uh, uh, sore subject among harmonica players, but 
Bob Dylan and Neil Young, maybe Bruce Springsteen, these are the the top uh, known examples of people playing in a brace whilst playing the guitar. You're going to hear that kind of roughness. Now, I'm not saying you should just accept that, but if there's a little bit, say maybe you play a couple of notes instead of one note, you know, you're aiming for single notes and they don't come out, that's not the end of the world. And the easiest way to make sure your playing is as good as possible in a rack is to make what you're aiming for simple. Because if you're trying to play really fast, really complicated passages, they're gonna get lost in the mix. Whereas if you just play a few beautiful, appropriate notes, then it can really, really be something that is uh, adding to the music. Personally, I love it when people play harmonica in a, in a rack, even if they keep it really simple, because it's just such a lovely sound to have that added to the music. So that's it for today, some basic tips. As I say, I don't do that much rack playing, so I'd love to hear in the comments your opinions, how you're getting on with it and what helps you. If you'd like step-by-step -step lessons to improve your harmonica playing, then how about a free trial of my harmonica school? You get to try as many of my courses as you like and see if it's for you. There's a link in the description to find out more about that. I'll see you again soon for another harmonica lesson. Do subscribe to my channel, click the bell for free harmonica lessons every single week. Until then, enjoy your practice. Cheers.